Hello, hope you're doing well. I have been having some hefty art block lately, which is nothing unusual, but recently in particular I've been juggling a lot and it's been kind of stressful, so it's felt like kind of an Ouroboros of art block where I don't draw one day and then I'm busy or tired the next day and then I feel too foggy headed to be creative the day after that because I haven't drawn in a minute, and the cycle kind of repeats. In the thick of that whole unproductive loop though, I happened to get invited to try out this new creativity app called Spark, who by the way very kindly offered to sponsor this video in return for me trying it out and giving my thoughts about it, so big thanks to them for that. And uh, yeah, I gave it a go, and I do have a lot of thoughts, both from a creative perspective and, honestly quite unexpectedly, more of an ADHD one. Given the aforementioned ADHD though, the thoughts are a little bit jumbled at the moment, so let's get into it, and I will try and explain as I go. So first things first, little disclaimer here, um, obviously like I say this video is sponsored, but regardless of whether I'm being sponsored to try something or not, I always want to give my genuine feedback about things, so rest assured that's what's going to be happening here too. Although I don't want to spoil anything here, but you'll know me, I wouldn't really go recommending anything that I don't genuinely vibe with in the first place. So yeah, with that in mind, let's talk first impressions. So when you open up Spark for the first time, the first thing that you get to do is draw your own profile picture. And uh, in all honesty, going into all of this, I was kind of apprehensive because I didn't entirely know what to expect in terms of like functionality, I guess, because I usually use pretty in-depth art programs and drawing apps for all of my normal kind of drawing stuff, right? And this isn't really either of those things. Rather, it's meant to be more like casually creative. Personally, I would affectionately describe it as almost more of like a doodling tool than anything. One thing I was worried about in particular was that, you know, because I do use programs that fall on the more complicated side the majority of the time, which can take a hot minute to get the hang of, I was kind of worried about how long it might take to get used to a new interface on a new app that I hadn't used before. But as soon as I opened up Spark and began trying to draw myself a profile picture here, much to my relief it was genuinely like immediately intuitive to figure out. Which, you know, in fairness might well have been because I am already familiar with a handful of painting programs and whatnot, so you know, maybe take that with a grain of salt if you haven't used any kind of drawing app before, like it might still take a minute to get the hang of it if you're completely green in that department, but uh, yeah, to me at least, it all felt really familiar to navigate pretty much right away. The basic setup is that you have your toolbar here at the bottom where you can tab between tools and pick colours, uh, undo and redo, all of that kind of stuff, and in a pleasant surprise, even use layers, which I say was a surprise to me because uh, <laughs> honestly this is probably quite silly on my part, but the folks at Spark actually did tell me that there was a layers feature in the app, but for whatever reason I genuinely just didn't expect it to be like immediately available. Like I don't even know what I did expect, or if I assumed it would be like a feature that you unlock later or whether I just didn't think I'd be able to, you know, make a separate sketch, ink, and colour layer when drawing a profile picture like this. But uh, yeah, that legitimately exceeded my expectations even though I kinda had been told to expect it. Um, <laughs> I will say though, there are both upsides and downsides when it comes to the layers feature. Uh, in particular, you might be able to see here that you can change the order that the layers are in and their opacity by tapping on them and using the relevant buttons, which is a definite upside, like that's very handy if you want to do like a sketch and then hide it after you're done inking or rearrange any of your layers, that kind of thing. However, this is only something that I really realized after I'd been using the app for a while because you don't really need to use the layers feature here to quite this extent, but there does seem to be an upper limit to how how many layers you can make in total, I, I think about 5 or 6 altogether, which is reasonable when you consider that this is a mobile app, but I think because I am used to working with a bunch of layers when I'm, you know, making my regular art pieces, that did kinda take me by surprise and I had to rein my usual habits in a bit in that regard, because normally I'd just merge extra layers together when I have one too many, but there also isn't an option to do that here. In its own way though, that did end up helping with the whole getting out of art block aspect that I was talking about before, and I actually do want to dive a bit deeper beyond just the basic drawing interface here and talk a bit more about that side of things in particular. So when I finished making my avatar, I got greeted by the Spark mascot and entered into the app itself. It's laid out like a cute little art studio that you can swipe through and explore, and tapping on different things around the studio will bring up different tabs. The main focal point I want to talk about though is the big canvas right here in the middle, because this is the part that had my ADHD riddled brain going going, oh, this could be a game changer. You see, the whole thing with this app, which I actually think I forgot to mention until now, which is my bad, um, <laughs> is that when you open up the canvas, you don't just get faced with a blank page. 
Instead, each day you get a different prompt, called a spark, that gives you a little jolt of inspiration to help get your ideas flowing. When I loaded it up for the very first time, I got this prompt about a reverse colouring book, and admittedly, again, I found myself feeling a little hesitant. I recorded this on what was very much a low spoons kind of day for me, and I legitimately did not have the brain power to figure out what that might have entailed, and I could feel my brain getting tired even just trying to think of it. But as it turns out, another thing that I didn't realise beforehand is that you don't just get given one prompt to work with each day. Instead, you get a whole handful that you can choose from by tapping these different shapes. But if you are feeling particularly inspired, you can still open up a completely blank canvas and create something original using the plus button at the bottom. In the end, I went for this prompt about fruit, and after browsing a few more of the options available in the toolbar, like stickers and backgrounds, I dove in and just had fun with it. I kept opening up Spark over the next week or so too, and trying out the different prompts each day, so I'm going to show you all a couple of those too while I carry on rambling here. Anyway, yeah, the basic way that I went about using the app was as a kind of way to warm up and try to overcome my ongoing art block when I had something creative I needed to do, but didn't necessarily have the spoons to actually do it. And that happens quite a lot, because as I've talked about a great many times in my videos before, the art block that I regularly struggle with is something that for me is intrinsically tied to my ADHD. Getting started on anything is one of the hardest things in the world for me because my brain is hardwired to work like a dynamo. I need to be in momentum to stay in momentum. And if I'm not in momentum, I need some kind of external prompting, uh, I realise I could even say some kind of external spark even, to get my brain in gear and get to work on whatever it is that I either want or desperately need need to do. It's hard to explain, but it's very much another one of those kind of Ouroboros moments. Not to mention that on top of that, normally I can get overwhelmed at even the prospect of doing warm-up sketches, because not only do I end up feeling like there are infinite drawing subjects that I could potentially pick from, but I also tend to get caught up in the detail and end up polishing them until they can't really be called a warm-up anymore because they've taken up a ton of time and energy. But what I found when I was creating stuff for these daily sparks was that even though the proportions and perspective and level of detail in them ended up being way off from the standard that I would normally hold myself to, especially for anything that I would normally put into a video like this, I was still really happy with them. If anything, I think I was even more happy with them than I would have been if I had forced myself to do like a traditional warm-up instead. And the reason for that is because by working within the bounds of a specific prompt and tool set, I felt like for what was genuinely the first time in quite a while, that I ended up not feeling overwhelmed or constrained by the expectations that I normally put upon myself to make everything look perfect. I realised that I might be waxing way more poetic than is maybe necessary for what is basically an app review here, but being able to make a bunch of doodles of mainly Leaf, honestly I ended up drawing him quite a lot, um, <laughs> but just like doodling as a part of this fun little mini game kind of setup was honestly a weirdly freeing experience compared to all of the really complicated work that I've been doing lately. Having said that though, even though I treated my Spark canvas as a place where I could not draw badly but just be a bit more unserious when I am drawing and not try to aim for perfection, you know what I mean? Um, some people I've seen on this app are out here making actual masterpieces, it's legitimately really impressive. On that note, I mentioned earlier that tapping on different items in the like studio homepage will bring up different tabs, and uh, besides the main canvas itself, a few of the other areas that you can visit from here are a public gallery of other people's creations, a personal gallery of your own creations, which by the way you can change the settings of at any time to make the stuff that you've made previously either viewable in the public gallery or private to be for your eyes only, as well as a zone for collaborative creations and a Polaroid and picture frame themed wall of quests and events and achievements, and even a space for asking your fellow sparklers, which is a very endearing name for the people who use this app, I am quite fond of that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can ask other people to help you come up with ideas if you ever do find yourself feeling stuck. One other thing that I forgot to mention as well is that during the week that I was recording for this video, the Spark team actually added a time-lapse feature to the app as well, which you can access via the same toolbar where the brushes and backgrounds are found. And uh, believe it or not, this was actually my first time ever using any kind of in-app screen recording feature like this, so while I don't really have any previous point of reference I could compare it to, it was very cool to see that something like this had been made available. And for what it's worth, it worked flawlessly on the very first try, even though the feature is still only in beta right now. 
Anyway, I've rambled for a hot minute here, but I hope that this has been a good introduction to any of y'all who maybe haven't heard of the Spark app before, and hopefully you can also understand why I ended up looking at it from not only a creative perspective, but also through the lens of my ADHD. I have to live with it all the time after all, so I'm always looking out for things that might be helpful to me when it comes to keeping grounded, keeping myself on track, and hopefully avoiding art block. So what's my final takeaway here? I definitely had fun with it, but would I say that Spark is a definitive cure for art block? No, not quite, because that's not really what it's meant to be. What it is, is just a nice calm corner where you can chill out and be creative without feeling like you're under pressure, or even having to think too hard about whatever it is that you're creating. And for a person like me who does overthink absolutely everything that he makes to the point of not being able to make anything a lot of the time, having a tool like that to help me make something small and fun so that I can at least get the ball rolling and warm my brain up to be in that mindset of like, hey, I've made something today, now I can make more. That is genuinely invaluable. I don't know if that's quite the intent that the Spark team had when they first made the app, so I can't really speak to it in that regard, but to me, it slaps. It, it slaps for that. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's my take on it. Thank you once again to the Spark team for sponsoring this one. It was really fun to try, like I say, and I definitely reckon I'm going to be using it more from here on out. And if any of you guys watching want to try out Spark for yourselves as well, there's going to be a link down in the description. And by the way, for any of you guys who do want to give it a go, make sure you get in there quick, because there are actually going to be a whole week's worth of prompts on the app between August 5th and 11th, all themed around the general vibes of this channel. If you create something for three of them in total, then you'll unlock a bunch of leaf stickers and leaf stickers that you can use in any of your future sparks. Hopefully I'll see you there and you all will have a bunch of fun with it, but for now, thank you very much for tuning into this one, and I hope you'll all keep on staying as safe, happy, and healthy as you possibly can.